Alrighty, so we finally had our behind the scenes tour. Um, we've been keeping it a secret for a couple, uh, about a week now. Um, so a lot of you have been asking where has our behind the scenes tour been? And it's just been delayed um, due to uh, us wanting uh, more things to film. So the longer the delay, the more there was to film. And boy, was there a lot to film today. And we have a lot of information to share with you guys today. So thanks to Grace Peacock from Canada's Wonderland, the director of communications, we got a really awesome behind the scenes tour. Um, and she was so awesome. We weren't rushed at all. We got awesome shots for you guys, awesome pictures for the Instagram account, um, and some awesome pictures for some posters too. Um, so stay tuned on our merch store, all which will be linked down below, for some awesome posters, HD posters of Yukon Strikers construction. Um, anyways, let's get right to it. So as you can see, you're probably wondering, wait, they're already at the Immelman? Um, the vertical loop's not done. Well, yeah, that's the case. So we're not too sure as to why the vertical loop hasn't been started. The support structure for the vertical loop hasn't even been put in place, yet um, they're already erecting the Immelman. Um, in fact, I can already see the Immelman piece laying next, so it's going to start going up, whereas there's no vertical loop pieces laying next to the vertical loop area. There is support columns for the vertical loop um, laying next to the vertical loop. I'm saying vertical loop a lot. Um, but yeah, there is support columns for it there, um, but no sign of track yet. So as you can see on the screen right now, I'm trying to like get all the information out because we do have a lot of information. So I will try to get everything out. If I forget anything, I will make another video. Um, but as you saw, we're walking in between the footings that'll connect the Immelman to the mid course break run. So this is where the support columns will go for that little kind of awkward phase after the Immelman that connects to the MCBR. Um, and right now I'm standing where the vertical loop will be. So as you can see, the exit of the vertical loop is done right there. And the entrance to the vertical loop was just where I was filming a second ago, but there's this really weird straight piece. So in the POV, it kind of makes it look like a little bump, but in person, it's, it's just a straight runway. Um, so you can definitely tell it's definitely designed to give it some speed, um, to hit that woman and then into the mid course break run. Um, so that's really cool. It, it's very straight as you guys can see with your own uh, eyes right now. Um, but this thing is really impressive in person. Again, I cannot stress enough that footage does not do Yukon Striker justice. I mean, this thing is visible from Rutherford, from Jane Street, from Major McKenzie. You can see it all over. Um, in fact, you can see the mid-course brake run from outside of the park as well. And then the airtime hill after the mid-course brake run um, outside of the park as well. This thing is very visible, so it's very tall. And I'm very excited because it looks like it's going to maintain a lot of speed throughout the coaster, which is unique for dive coasters. Uh, you're not losing that momentum right after the first Immelman. Um, so I'm excited to see what kind of G's uh, and forces and unique experience Yukon Striker is going to dish out um, in April 2019. But um, as you can see, there's the mid-course break run that I'm looking up at right now. So that was put in about two weeks ago. Um, and the drop, the second drop, or the drop out of the mid-course break run. Um, here you have the 0G roll. Now, y'all can like uh, definitely drag me down below, but I do not see this as a 0G roll. I am not a full-fledged enthusiast, though, and uh, in terms of knowledge and terms, I am not the greatest and haven't been the greatest. But based off of what I've seen online, this does not seem to be a full-fledged zero-G roll. It almost looks like a zero-G roll and a dive loop kind of mixed together. Um, now, if you saw, I just looked over into Whitewater Canyon's forest. Um, there's a reason for that. So there are some markings in there. There have been a little bit of land clearing over by um, the Canyon Trader Shop. And uh, that's definitely uh, probably where you'll see some shops for Frontier Canada. Well... A lot of you may have questions, what is Frontier Canada going to hold or what is it going to house and what's going to take place in Frontier Canada? Well, uh, Frontier Canada is going to be um, themed to something like Dawson City um, from Yukon, uh, and it's definitely going to be from the Gold Rush era, and it's going to be somewhat educational from what we were told. So the whole purpose is like, you know, to educate like some younger people who don't necessarily know what Yukon and the Gold Rush era is. They want it to be very like heritage and Canadian um, and they're going to blend it out. Something also that's very interesting is this is phase one of Frontier Canada. That's very interesting information. 
Um, so if I were to make a quick prediction, and I'll make a separate video on this, um, but if I were to make a quick prediction on the spot right now, I'm going to guess UConn Straker um, for 2019. 2020, you're going to see maybe a family ride or restaurant added to Frontier Canada with some theming added as well, some more theming. Year three, you're probably going to see a thrilling flat ride um, with some more theming upgrade, maybe something similar to what Cedar Point got for 2019, so front, Forbidden Frontier, um, and then, or um, RMC's Mindbuster, whatever that fits in. So there, I definitely think Mindbuster is definitely going to be RMC'd. I can definitely strongly say that I don't think Wild Beast is getting RMC anymore. It looks like Wild Beast is probably going to be receiving some retracking. Um, in fact, a very big portion of it retract again. And uh, this is going to be its fourth year being retracked. And I just don't see a wooden coaster that's going to be RMC anytime soon, going four years of significant retracking. Mindbuster, on the other hand, has ve had very little retracking other than the Helix, and that might have been mandatory. Um, and I just think that it fitting right into Frontier Canada would make more sense. Um, but nonetheless, I'm excited, um, and I can't wait to talk about Mindbuster and how it fits into Frontier Canada, um, and how Mindbuster was the original um, kind of crown holder for Frontier Canada and its original concept, and it seems like Wonderland is really wanting to go back to its roots um, and make Frontier Canada what it was supposed to be, and to me that screams something Mindbuster. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep my out. I, 2021 for me is like the year that it's going to happen. Um, it's our anniversary. I know Cedar Fair doesn't do anniversaries, but it fits into the five-year expansion plan that Canada's Wonderland's probably under um, and kind of what we got out of the interview today. Um, trying to think of anything else in this area in terms of information. So um, I am going to talk about the station work, and uh, Grace was very nice to send me a picture of some of the station work and queue line being built. Um, we were unable to go over there in the area today um, the, at, well, at 8.30 in the morning because there was an inspection taking place and we couldn't get in the way of it. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't get to go over to the station area, but Grace sent us over pictures, um, which was super awesome. So as you can see here, the Helix is being built. In fact, they're about to lift another turn piece for the Helix, and boy, did I not realize how much, how much it was going to be angled on Yukon Striker. Seeing this in person, it's definitely going to be pulling some pretty cool, like, geez, it's not going to be nothing, it's not going to be anything significant, but I mean, it's still going to be really fun. Um, anyway, so this is me walking underneath the zero G roll, probably fangirling really hard right now. Um, but boy, is this thing super impressive in person. Um, I could not believe it. I absolutely loved this tour. Again, this felt like a really awesome construction tour. Definitely loved it. This thing is going to have some amazing views from all around. So something um, that we learned during our construction tour um, is that the tracks or the rails are filled with sand. Um, neighbors and neighborhoods kind of got a loud rumble from Leviathan and Behemoth, and Wonderland wanted to fix that problem with Yukon Striker and filled its rails with sand. Um, as you can see, we were hearing some work going on in Timberwolf. We couldn't see any people, but we heard drilling and like stuff like that. So I don't know if Timberwolf is getting a little bit of a facelift to go on with Yukon Striker, or if it's just regular season maintenance. Um, I have no idea. But one thing I want to stress is the Immelman out of the drop. This thing is massive. So this thing is so far up in the sky compared to a lot of things at Canada's Wonderland, and it really stands out from anywhere in the park. I mean, you see that drop, you see the lift hill, and you see the Immelman from anywhere in the park, and this thing looks so nice. In fact, the best angle of Yukon Striker is um, at front gate to the right side of front gate or the right side of International Street, and look up to the mountain, and boy, does it look awesome. In fact, I think Medieval Fair will have the better angle as well. Um, kind of like where they do the shows on the little pond. Um, having that angle as well, that'll probably be the best picture spot for um, a beautiful photo with the mountain and Yukon Striker. And I can't wait to go check that out next season. Um, but boy, does this thing look amazing. I tried to get some shots that made it look like it was complete, like right here. Well, minus that. Um, but this thing is really impressive. That zero G roll right after the Immelman, and then the fact that it's going to go into a vertical loop, and then another Immelman, and then into the MCBR. I'm beyond excited. I don't know about you guys. I know a lot of people aren't fans of B&M dive coasters. I'm a significant fan of a dive coaster, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, and I totally understand if you're not a fan of a dive coaster, though. I'm not attacking you. I just love them personally. 
um, and I'm so excited. But very shortly, um, I'm gonna show you some close-up shots of the Immelman, and then I'm gonna take you down into the tunnel. Um, so a couple of other things that we learned is, again, Frontier Canada, this is phase one of the expansion. Um, Yukon Striker is kind of Canada's Wonderland's way of dipping their toes into the international kind of <laughs> draw for uh, enthusiasts and people alike. And the park is receiving a lot of positive feedback for Yukon Striker. In fact, um, if you look it up on a lot of the videos, add it up, Yukon Striker is Cedar Fair's most viewed announcement video yet. Um, it garners um, over like, I think we're almost like around 30 million views in total. Uh, for the announcement. So dive coasters really pack a punch in terms of media. Um, now, <laughs> here we are going down the, the tunnel. So it was a little bit icy, so we had to hold on to a safety rope as well, especially near the bottom, it gets really icy. Um, but yeah, that's just because they're in the early construction phase. They're nowhere near done. Uh, they have a lot of work to do, as you can tell. Um, but down here is uh, definitely gonna house some surprises, I believe, from previous interviews that I've had with park officials. Um, there, I have no idea what this is for, but it's obviously for the water system of some sort. So this is the emergency pumps. Um, so if there's ever water that gets in here, it'll pump it out of the tunnel. Um, again, it was super icy down here. And this is where we held our interview with Grace Peacock. Again, go check her out on Twitter. Um, she's super awesome. She posts a lot. Um, and I couldn't be more thrilled with how active, um, she is on social media and definitely engaging the community in an awesome way with her posts. In fact, I think we almost get posts daily some weeks, which is absolutely stunning. Anyways, you guys are gonna get this awesome view of Yukon Striker from the base looking up. This thing's impressive. Again, you're gonna drop 90 degrees into an underwater tunnel and the underwater tunnel is a lot larger than it looks. Uh, if you get a good overview shot, you would be able to see how large this thing really is. This video makes it look a lot smaller than it is. Um, but yeah, Yukon Striker is very impressive. Um, I cannot wait to ride in April. Um, definitely want to hear from you guys. Are you excited to ride Yukon Striker in April? Are you going to be making a trip on over to Canada's Wonderland in April if you're an international person, if you're from the States or from another foreign country? Are you going to be making a trip to Canada's Wonderland to ride Yukon Striker in 2019? Comment down below if you're going to be there. Um, and uh, yeah, so as you can see, the lake is drained. Um, a lot of the support columns are done. They have very few left to install. And uh, the helix is almost done from this angle. So we're going to show you some shots. And we're going to start talking about the station. So we have some awesome details to share with you guys about the station. Thanks to Grace. So um, the queue line is um, going to start right underneath the turn out of the station. It's going to kind of go underground. Um, it'll be a bit of a tunnel. And then it's going to come back up and zigzag its way um, all the way down to past the station. And then it's going to do a bunch of switchbacks um, and then head on back over where you'll enter on the right side and you'll exit on the left. Um, so there's definitely going to be a lot of theming. Again, they're going for the Dawson City from uh, Yukon kind of era and uh, look. And uh, the station's going to be steel. Um, and the foundation for the station, the theming, is done. Um, and there's already footings for like pathways and scenery and stuff like that installed. Um, I'll plop up a quick shot on the screen for you guys. Not a quick, I'll probably leave it up actually because it's really cool. Um, so again, thanks to Grace for sharing that shot of the station work. So the foundation for the station is done. You have some footings for uh, pathways and theming. Um, electrical still ongoing for Yukon Striker. So um, they're still connecting all of that in and around the station. Um, there are two teams now working on completing the iron work for um, Yukon Striker. I don't know why they call them iron workers um, when it should be like steel workers, but I get that they do a lot of other projects. Um, so there's two teams now working on different sides of the project to make sure that this is done before the end of the year. So um, Canada's Wonderland and, uh, you know, Fox ES is definitely working to get this coaster done before the end of the year. Um, so that they can start working on the other details of Yukon Striker. They have a lot of testing to do um, and uh, a lot of other aspects to go on uh, for Yukon Striker. In fact, I, from what we're hearing, there's a lot of secrets that, that have not yet been announced that are going to be announced in the new year. Um, so I can't wait to learn what those secrets are. Couldn't be more thrilled as to what they're kind of hiding from us. 
Um, but yeah, definitely lots of work going on. We could not get a good view of what's going on at Mindbuster. We weren't allowed over in that area. Um, but yes, so excited. Um, so as you can see, there's a very large team working on the queue line and station area. You can't see in this footage, but you'll see in the picture that Grace sent us that they've started the foundation for the station and it looks dry. So they should be starting any day now. They've been digging out the queue line over the last couple of weeks. Um, and again, you enter under the turn of the station. Um, and uh, yeah, then you go through a bunch of zigzag with a nice steel Yukon gold rush um, station look. Um, and the speakers at the top, they refuse to comment on what the speakers are for, but I can confirm they are permanently pointed out. So there is definitely going to be some sort of theming um, without those speakers pointed out. And they start around the turn. So I'm expecting some sort of like creaking, then maybe an eagle screech or something like that. I have no idea. But here's some shots of the um, kind of like dam they built for construction to allow water flow to still pass through. Um, but regardless, I hope you guys really enjoyed the footage um, and the construction tour. There is going to be a cinematic version with cinematic footage uploaded um, tonight or tomorrow as well. A little quick kind of like tour and cinematic. Um, hopefully you guys really enjoyed this construction update. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good one. Bye.